Hey guys, it's May May, and recently you might have seen that I made this box to use as a treat box or a giveaway box for mini slimline cards. This is a stack of mini slimline cards with their envelopes that fit inside. Well, in that video, somebody mentioned, I love that box, but I would love to do a matchbook match book box style. That has been so hard for me to say. And I thought, what a good idea. They didn't request that I do it. They were going to do it themselves, but I thought, I want to do that too. So today we're going to start from scratch together and make a match box, nope, match book box <laughs> for these cards. So let me tell you what I thought. I'm going to start from the envelope. Now, why am I going to start from the envelope? Because the envelope is bigger than the card and I have learned from experience that if you make a box for the card your envelopes aren't going to fit so ignore the card let's make a box for the envelope I thought I'd take you along for the ride so I've done a little bit of research and there's a certain style that I want to make but we need to figure out all of the measurements and stuff what I thought is if I took you along for the ride then you would be able to do this with anything you have in your craft room Okay, so I know my dimensions the box needs to be is slightly larger than this. So let's measure. And this guy is mm, three and five eighths, naturally, three and five eighths, right? So I think our box needs to be uh, three and seven eighths. And that gets us an eighth of an inch on either side. Now, honestly, if you don't want to work in seven eighths, you could totally just make this um, four inches and just make it a little bit bigger because by the time you put everything inside, you're only going to have a little more than an eighth of an inch on either side if you did it as a four inch box. Why don't we do it at four inches? And that's how my process goes because when I'm thinking about you guys, I'm like, mm, I don't like eights. They're not going to like eights. Let's go to four. All right. So that means I need a four inch center for my box. Now, how tall does it need to be? Along that same idea, this guy is six and a half. So if I want to add the same amount that I did to that one, I'll make it six and three-fourths long. So we should have a lot of room. So let me get a notepad. So I will start by writing down four by six and three-fourths. Okay, that's my base. Now for the box I want to make, I want it to have an inch tall side, but I also want it to wrap in for extra support. So I really need two inches on either side. So if we're four inches wide, here's what I do. I write the four in the middle. Then I need to add two inches this way, okay? So I'm gonna put two here, and then I need to add two inches this way. So now I've got my box base, my sides, and my sides. Now I need it to be six and three-fourths tall, so let's work on the height here. So we'll write six and three-fourths. And I need the same thing. I want two inches at the top and two inches at the bottom. So I'm gonna go plus two, and plus two. I promise this is not common core math. This is just how I do this in my brain. So this means I need a piece of cardstock that is um, four, six, eight inches, eight inches by six, eight, ten, and three fourths. Does that make sense? Now I always go back and check my math again because I'm really bad. So if I go two plus two is four, plus six is 10 and three fourths, and then two plus two is four, plus four is eight. So this is the side, size cardstock I will need. Now if this is confusing, you just stick around for a second because it'll make sense. So let me get a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna do exactly what I said. I'm gonna cut this guy down to eight inches by 10 and three fourths. And let me tell you something. Sometimes these things work and sometimes they don't. <laughs> For example, the other day when I was making that other box, which I've made boxes a thousand times, you'd think it'd be no problem. I just kept running into a snag after snag after snag, and sometimes it just doesn't work. But today we're going to make it work. I feel it. I feel like it's going to happen. All right, so here is our cardstock for the box. Now we're going to need our scoreboard. You might be thinking, why'd you pull your score out, your scoreboard out early? Sometimes I use my scoreboard to get this math, but since I'm doing such even numbers, it was pretty easy today. But sometimes I'll literally take my scoreboard, take the piece that I'm wanting to create, lay it down, like I know the number now, but lay it down in between like my four, like this is my four inches, and then I would measure out. Today I, did, today I didn't do it, I just did it with the formula. All right, so if this is my formula, I kind of automatically know my score marks, and I'll tell you why. Because I know I want the sides of my box to be an inch high, right? But remember, I added two inches because I want stability. So we're going to score it at one inch. That's half of the side. Then at two inches, and that's the other piece. These are the pieces that will glue onto each other for strength, okay? Then I know that I've given myself a four-inch space in the middle. So from two inches, I'm going to count over four. One, two, three, four, or just do the math and say six. 
So I'm gonna score it at six. Now I need that one inch mark again. So I end up on both sides with one inch score, one inch score, one inch score, one inch score, okay? When you're doing this in your craft room, this will make super sense. Now, this part is easy. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to score at one inch. Why? Because we're making a box. So, the sides and the ends need to be the same height when you finish. And I'm going to score that one at two inches. Now, I left myself a six and three-fourths inch gap. So, I need to, I need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, and three-quarters. So, eight and three-quarters is that mark. And then I need to score an inch away from there, which is nine and three quarters. And since we cut our page to 10 and three fourths, all of our measurements worked out. So that one was easy, right? So let me just run through real quick and tell you these scores. So on the 10 and three quarter side, it's one, two, eight and three fourths and nine and three fourths. And if it go back to our first side, on our eight inch side, it's one, two, six and seven. So if you don't wanna do all the math, all of that will be in the description and in our blog post for you. Okay, now I want this guy to be sturdy and I'm trying to decide if I want my sturdiness, sturdiness on the side or, well, on the ends or on the side. I think I want it more to the sides. I feel like this, because of this length, it'll get a little weak here, but this is so short, it'll keep its own stability. So why does that matter? It matters in how we cut away these pieces, all right? And here's what I mean by that. These little squares that I have made for myself down here, let me get them where you can see them. I'm gonna flip it over so you can see it. This little section right here is going to live in here. I know it makes no sense right now, but when we do it, it will. And in my brain, it makes sense. Let me get my scissors. So down here, not the first score mark, but the second score mark up, I'm gonna cut from here to where they intersect at the box base. And I'm going to cut away the score mark. I do not need the score mark. So I've cut to the left-hand side of the score mark. And then here, I'm gonna make a classic angle cut. Those angle cuts will always help you because you don't need any bulk. Now, I'm create, I'm turning this into a complete tab. You'll see why in a second, this whole piece. So I'm going to cut away another angle at this end up to the same score line, okay? Now, I need to do that motion here, here, and here, all right? So on this side, I'll be cutting to the right-hand side of the score mark because I'm gonna cut the score mark away. Then I'm gonna angle cut. That angle cut is not super important how deep it is. You don't want it super deep because you want to keep some of that cardstock because we are using it for stability. All right, so there's the bottom, and now I'll do the top just the same. So there we go. This is going to be how we assemble our box. All right, on the ends of the box, I want to fold, I want to do all my score marks. So I'm going to fold the base in and crease that down nice and tight. And I want to fold this score mark in. Now, is this score mark overkill? It could be overkill, but I'm going to utilize this extra cardstock for stability, okay? So I'm gonna bring that over like so. These guys are gonna turn in now. I've just made it to where they will double up so they'll be super sturdy. So I'm gonna bring this in and crease that down. And I really, with this cardstock, might not have needed all this stability because I'm using a thick cardstock. But I feel like this may be a box that someone keeps for a long time. Maybe you're gonna refill the cards as a present or something like that. And see, this, these tabs are going to end up in here wrapped around by our sides. And see how stable and how sturdy that side is gonna be? That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold this one in. And then I'm gonna fold this in on itself, <laughs> like so, and crease that one down. Then I'm gonna fold these guys in. Now on the side, you guessed it, we're gonna just fold both of those score marks and then we're gonna assemble this base. So I hope this helps you to come up with your own, to be able to you know create your own boxes in your craft room. You never know what you might need a box for and hopefully by me showing you how I did my measurements, you'll be able to do that as well. So let me get the other side done and we will assemble. Okay, on the ends of the box where we did this for stability, I wanna add glue right here. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna run it right inside 
of this little rectangle. Now you could use sticky tape here, but I'm just using wet glue. I've got it and it'll work just fine. And I'm also gonna take my bone folder and burnish that down. This is something Shanna did and I was like, how brilliant. This works really well. So that way my glue gets everywhere. And now we have super sturdy sides. Isn't that cool? Okay, these guys are gonna get glued in and we're gonna glue, we're gonna wrap that over. Did you see what I did there? Let me show you on this side. This is gonna go in, okay? This is gonna come up and then wrap down and we're gonna glue it together just like that. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. What I think I will do to start is add glue to my flaps, to both of them. Not too much, just enough to hold them into place. Bring those in and then bring that side up to them. And go ahead and get that glued down. Even though I'm pressing it into place, I'm really just holding those little tabs in there to get that worked in. The thing about this box is it is gonna be super sturdy. I mean super sturdy because we got these sides working for us. All right, so now that those are tacked into place, I'm gonna add glue and bring this side over. This might be and might seem like overkill, but again, if you're making something you want somebody to be able to use for a very long time, you wanna consider stability. Because remember, it's just cardstock. All right, let's do the other side just the same. So check it out, this is a super sturdy base. Now I'm gonna take a punch and I wanna make a thumb spot. Because it is so sturdy, I don't wanna kinda of fight it. So let's see what size we want to use. I think we're gonna do it with the one inch. And I'm just gonna stick it down as far as it'll go, which is not super far, but I don't need it to do much. I just want to be able to stick my thumb in there and pull this out. There we go. And I don't need it on both sides. I only need it on one. And this way, I can easily get my thumb in there to pull that little drawer or little box out. All right, now you're like, but what you gonna pull it out of? So we've got to build the top. And it's gonna be very much like we did our math earlier. But we need to do our math again, okay? You cannot make the slider the same size as the box or it won't slide well. So we might have to get into eights here. Let's see what we ended up with. It's exactly four inches. I'm pretty proud of that. I'm shocked that I did that, but it's exactly four inches. So I will probably make my slider box four and one eighth. So it has just the tiniest little bit to wrap around. So we're gonna go back to our formula sheet. I'll set that one there as a reminder. We'll go back to our formula sheet. And now we're gonna be working with four and one eighth. And we're gonna add to either side. And why are we gonna add to either side? Because we need to have a wrap and a wrap. But this time we only need to wrap once. Let's measure our sides. It's exactly one inch. I'm gonna add one and an eighth. <laughs> so I'm gonna go one and one eighth to this side and one and one eighth to this side. Now we're not done because that covers our base and our two sides, but we also need to do something here, okay? What I wanna do is have this piece wrap over. So I'm gonna need to add four and one eighth but technically, I'm gonna want this to overlap right here to glue down. So I really probably should make this five inches so I can overlap that easily, if that makes sense. If I, if I allow five inches on the bottom, they will overlap. So I wanna split five in half, and why do I wanna do that? Because I want it to go to both sides. So half of five is two and a half. So we're gonna add two and a half and add two and a half. Oh, what a mess, right? Okay, well, let's do the math. Probably need to do this off screen. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I'm gonna write down my holes and now I'll start doing these. So these two halves are one and these two eighths are a quarter. Oh, there's another eighth. So it's three eighths. So it's gonna be plus one and three eighths. So I need a piece of cardstock that is 11 and three eighths wide Whew, that'll fit on a 12, we're good. And then the height is gonna be easy because it's just gonna be this number. We should be six and, six and five eighths. I'm gonna do it at six and five eighths. I could do it at six and a, I'm gonna do it at six and three quarters to give us an even number. All right, six and three fourths. And then I've got 11 and three eighths. I hope I didn't lose you. I could have, because numbers and me, we don't do well. And I could have done that math wrong, but this is how I find out. So let's get our cardstock cut. 
Okay, so I've gone back to the paper pad that had the frogs, and I love this page, and I want it to be what wraps around because it'll match my cards. So I need to do my first cut at six and three-fourths. That's an easy one. So we'll just do that. Now, on our second cut, we've got to do eights, and we need three of them. And don't panic about eights. It's just two notches on your trimmer. So you're going to do 11 and six notches, and that will get you three eights. Or, oh, I don't want to confuse you or it's two notches back from a half. I'm just saying it. Okay, if you struggle with measurement, I have a video on my channel that basically teaches you how to read a ruler, and I will have Tamitha link that for you guys. So if you want to go and check out my ruler or measuring video, it'll be there for you. Okay, to the scoreboard, Batman. Here is our scoreboard. So we're gonna need to make our score mark. So I'm gonna flip this guy over. Now, based on our formula, we'll kind of know <laughs> where our score marks will live. So I'm gonna bring my little formula back over. And so our first score mark is two and a half, okay? So on our 11 and um, three, three eight side. So two and a half is our first score mark. Our next score mark is one and an eighth inch away from that. So if it's two and a half, it's going to be three and a half, be three and five eighths. Don't worry, I'll go back and give you these measures like we did a while ago. Now I need to go four and one eighth inches away from that. So if I'm here, five eighths, I'm gonna count four inches. One, two, three, four, and add an eighth. So I'm gonna be doing this one at seven and three fourths. So it doesn't, it's not the worst. You just have to kind of pay attention. So from here, I need to do one and one eighth. So I'm gonna go from seven and three fourths to eight and three fourths plus an eighth, which is eight and seven eighths. And now this should leave me with two and a half inches. So we have our, our wrap over. And that's all the scores we have to do. So let me go back and read those off to you. So we've got two and a half. We've got three and five eighths. We've got seven and three fourths. And then we've got eight and seven eighths. Not too bad. I don't like working in eights, but I find with boxes, you typically always do. All right, let's fold and score. I'm tempted to let the polka dots be on the top, but I don't know. I, I fell in love with these frogs, so let's just go with the frogs. So there's one fold. And my next fold. Sometimes, I'm nervous about this, because sometimes when I add those eights, I can add too many. Like, you notice how I added one kind of everywhere? Sometimes I find I add too many. But the other thing I find is when you're scoring, especially if you use a thick score bone, uh, bone folder like this, sometimes it takes up some of that eights and it's best to have them built in because it just can. All right, so now you see these guys are gonna lap over, which is what we wanted them to do. So we can have a nice square box, see? So we need to glue that together. So I'm gonna put my glue to the side that's gonna be my top you know what else you can do? Let me show you something. All right, let's test run this. Let's see if this works. So let's put this box in. Oh, it's good. Look at that. It's good. So something you can do, especially if you're making this at home, do you see how I added those eights and we get plenty of room? You can glue this on the box. So here's what I mean. So wrap it around the box so you get a nice fit, okay? And then add your glue. So you know, because this is your custom box, so you know this is going to fit exact. I may have put too much. No, we're good. We're good. So I know that's where I want it to go. So I'm just going to pull that box out and then I'm going to take my bone folder and stick it in there and squish that down. And again, it's your box. So you're custom making it. You don't really care if it's, you know, not exactly square or whatever. It's going to fit this particular um, slider. So now look how well it slides in. And that's really good. You don't want it to be so tight that the recipient has to fight it. That's another thing you don't want. So that is a matchbox slider card. Let's put our cards in it and see how many it'll hold. And I love this because I can put my finger in and pull this guy out. So let's see. So this is the eight cards and eight envelopes I made the other day. So I'm going to slide these in and see how they fit. Oh, that fits really nice, really nice. The cards themselves are going to have some wiggle. That's okay. We made this to fit our envelopes, remember? And look how little space our envelope has. That's really nice too. So if it bothers you that your cards kind of wiggle around, you can do two things. You could wrap a ribbon around these and put them in. You could give the recipient a pin. You could add a pin in here and that would take up some space too and then close that up. And of course, you'll want to decorate the top and make it super cute. But that 
is the basic construction. And I feel like this video might be long, so I'm not gonna decorate it today, but I wanted you to see that. So two options, matchbox style, or we also have the traditional box style video. We have that one for you as well. We can link that one so you can see it too. All right, guys, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed that kind of how to build a box process video. I think it's pretty interesting to watch and I like to kind of tell you my thought process. Let me know in the comments below if you like this style video because I never mind kind of bringing you in so you can, the more you know, right? The more you know. Don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 300,000. I cannot wait to get there. I don't even know what we're doing. We have so many ideas in the works for a giveaway at 300,000, so be a part of that. Go check out our brand new blog. Tamith has done an amazing job on the new blog. The post for this will be there as well, so if you wanna get the clean measurements for that without having to watch the process. And join our Discord. You'll have so much fun over there chatting with other crafters and things like that. And if you make this box, you know I want to see it. So head to our customer gallery and throw a picture of your box up there so I can see how well you've done. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Until next time, bye now.